That sucks. Ah, All right, boys. Nice to see. We are officially back. We're live. I'm with Kev Kelly, Boog Meek again. Um, <laughs> I wish there's video. Boog was giving it the, the shoot. Um, Stilo Brim. <laughs> wow. Stilo. <laughs> um, so I uh, figure today we got UFC 281 coming up. Um, so I figure we start by first going over a little recap and then we're getting into 281. But first I wanted to ask, how are you guys doing? What's up? What's uh, What's been up the last two weeks since we talked? Anything? Anything new? Go ahead, Kev. Shit, man. I don't know. I was just watching World Series play. Houston taking care of Philly. Um, so I'm pretty bummed as a, just a hardcore baseball fan that we got to wait till March. You know, just not in on NBA yet. I've never been a huge Chell guy or NHL follower, but Oof. no, man, other than that, just chilling, man, doing good. I love to hear it. Uh, if you guys, well, you can't see, but Kev's got a, a toothpick in all uh, dusty right now. All lot uh, dusty, baby. Come <laughs> you on. You got to love that. Um, but on the <laughs> Chell, dude, I've been going to Sharks games because they're just dirt cheap right now. I bet. And me and my dad went to one, I think it was last Thursday, and there was maybe a thousand people there. It was just, it was oh, empty. Oh my God. It was so bad. Um, but I've been to, I think, three or four this year, and they've all just like, they they look like a minor league hockey team. It's Damn. not good. Oh. Never thought I'd see the day that the Shark Tank would be empty. Right? The place was always rocking. Just packed. It was a sick yeah. place to go. They put a lot of money into it. Uh but yeah, there's just there's not the New there. Jersey man, all teal. I like those though. Wow, uh, the oh, sick combos. Well, and they came out with like the reverse retro ones. I don't know if you guys have seen those. I think. Oh yeah. They kind of missed the ball on them a little bit. They could have went with just the oh. like the teal ones would have been sick. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, the Sharks. It's, it's been a tough season, but uh, yeah, Stros did it, baby. Yes, they did. Dusty finally gets one in. Yep. After and then there was also a little fact I heard. That was the first time an MLB team had won a World Series at home since 2013. Wow. For a home team to get a celebration. I thought that was like That's super kind cool of, Right? Fact. That's kind of a sick yeah. – uh, I would have never thought that. I feel like baseball home field advantage is, is a lot more – You know, I mean, you get a lot more out of that than other sports. Yep. But – uh Shoot, Who knows that's... that off the top? Who is the team? I think I know it. 2013 champs? Yeah. Oof. Oof. I think it's the Sox, the Red Sox. That was my gut thought. Wow. I would have had no, I would have said it was the year after the Giants. <laughs> that's all I got for you. <laughs> um, damn. Love that, though. Yeah. Sucks that we got to wait till March, but uh, that was a good end to a series, I feel like. I mean,. Oh yeah, it was a great, uh, great start by Philly, and then uh, just kind of closed out. Kate Upton giving the finger to everyone in yeah, Philly. Yeah, why and not then, do it, Kate? And you then giving it. the finger to Giselle, <laughs> <laughs> giving it to Giselle and Tom when she said she wants to see Justin play as long as he wants to play. I was wow. like, wow, that's wow. Didn't know that did, man. <laughs> yeah, she... letting it eat, huh? Exactly. Okay. I was like, <laughs> just a dog. But uh, book, what have you been up to? Oh man, just uh, a lot of school out here. Yeah. In the, uh, in the Reno, uh, we had a big, big snow day today, so my last class got canceled. So no, no presentation today for uh, Boog Meek. But uh, oh yeah, I forgot you were supposed to be coming in hot off of Prezi. Yeah. Um, Lubed up. <laughs> yeah, seriously. But uh, yeah, man, just uh, just chilling, trying to get school in order, and uh, working out when I can. And, uh, you know, watching as much Lakers and Bronx as I uh, can. Well, and you UFC, got, of course. Ex- yeah, definitely UFC. But you got a, a break with your Bronx this week. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Off a big Lundy win. Lundy, Lundy bridge. I'm, <laughs> I'm um, loving it. Sad to see Chubb go, though. Sad to see Chubb go. That is a, it's a tough loss. Um, how, how's the Lake Show doing? Oh, shoot, they rattled off two wins in a row, and Russ was playing well, and I was loving it. And then uh, Bron Bron's kind of hit a, a big dip. Uh, obviously, the the big news is his uh, his lying skills lately. But uh, um, 
play has been tough. So, uh, the AD's bad, turning down media on the trading block. I mean, <laughs> not, not good. So, are you thinking just a full dismantle? I think send Brown to Cleveland. I mean, why not? Wow. Get a bunch of picks, put him on that team. Do you think him and Brawny ever end up playing together? Uh, yeah, because it's like he's going to control his own destiny, like go wherever Brawny goes. But I think Bryce is the one that's going to be the, the, the best. Is he the, the middle one or the youngest? Yeah, he's the middle one. I think he's like a, a sophomore, but he's like – Six six. He was Goggles. always barrel Balls. chested too. <laughs> just a huge kid. <laughs> Wore husky pants. Yeah. <laughs> um uh, that's good. Hey, Lake Show finally finally showing something. We'd love to hear that. Um yep, definitely. But sweet. Sweet, sweet. Um, if you guys you definitely can't see, but I got a haircut. I went into a barber shop. I have a zero on my head. This is not what I asked for. Wow. I uh I mean you, you get what you pay for. I, I go to great <laughs> clips just because I was like a five on top, two on the sides. It's just as easy as it gets, really. Um and this nice nice elderly Asian man had just the softest touch and just barely cut anything oh, God. and jacked it up. I mean splotch central so oh, man he's like all right how does it look i was like oh uh, uh good uh didn't know what to say <laughs> shitting my pants because i was like i don't want to be oh, that guy god so i walk out to the car and i look in the mirror and i was like oh my god i cannot like i i can't like there's hairs that he didn't even <laughs> cut in the front like didn't touch oh my god and so i uh Walked back and I waited for him to grab another person that was waiting in line. And as soon as he started cutting their hair, I went to the person up front and said, yo, he banged me up. Like, can you just shave it off? <laughs> and so I just went right back to the place and just had him give me a zero all the way around. And it just not good and super awkward. They were speaking a foreign language to each other after, and it did not sound pleasant. Um, I don't know if she was yelling at him or if they were yelling at me i don't know it sucked it was awkward <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah have you guys oh. ever had a a shitty haircut you had to go back and and get re-snipped god no but i was gonna recommend you a place to go that's close man don't go to great Cliffs anymore <laughs> my man i go to the barber shop off a of bird right by lincoln Glen. wow i i've seen that a million times you trust them over yes. there Yes, I've gone there for like at least two, three years, man. Damn. Solid price, good cut. You don't really ever have to wait. It'll be better than Great Clips for sure, man. <laughs> well, see, I went to, uh, there's a place in downtown Willow Glen. It's like right behind La Villa. And it's uh, these three, I think they're Mexican dudes own it. But uh, they, I went in there on a late night and they cut my hair. It looked perfect, faded it perfect. And were like, do you want it lined up? And I said, I've never had that. I think I'm good. And he's like, nah, trust me. It'll look good. And he lined me up, and it looked so fucking bad. <laughs> and so I was just like, I, I'm not going to, like, a bar. I just wanted to just a shitty, you know what I mean? Not a shitty, but I just wanted to quick cut, get in, get out. Yeah. but Bro, uh, that's bird. That's that's good to know. Hey, I, I like that. Because I, I used to be a big let the barber talk and have the whole convo, but now I'm like... No, I want. You I don't just, have to have it there, player. Just, you can just sit there and watch the magic, man. And they got NFL Network on. You go there on a Sunday, baby. Wow. It's nice. Damn, that's <laughs> see. This is what the pod's for. Hey, hey, info. I like that. Here we go. <laughs> um, but yeah. So brutal week for your boy. Um, doesn't but, look too bad though. No, I mean yeah, this is really. the haircut I always go with. So it's like it's really not even a change up for me. Uh. It just sucks because it was fucking cold, and now yeah. my head's freezing. Um, Gone, Beanie. <laughs> wow. Uh, but speaking of cold, Bug, you said you just got some snow today. Um, yeah, a whole lot. A whole lot. Of really? Like a couple inches, three, four inches, or more yeah, and more? I, I, I know you, you don't have snap. I, my story was, uh, see, you see, there's was, was a lot of uh, low-key blizzard going on here. 
God, there's nothing like better said, than mm-hmm. Reno in the last, snow. Last class is canceled, so. Uh, um, yeah, they don't do a very good job on campus of keeping it, like, slippery free. I mean, there's so many stairs yeah. and shit. It's like people, as soon as it starts, it gets icy. Um, but shoot, uh, that's, I love this. And it was like a, it was like a late, like it was supposed to snow at like 6 a.m. And then nothing came, nothing came. Walked to class at like 8.40. And I like was debating big jacket or no. So I was like, F it, I'm doing big jacket. <laughs> Brought it to class. And then when we came out, it was just like. Dumping. Downpour. Yeah. I was like, thank God. There's nothing better. It's like late night, going on a late night snow walk when it's just dead quiet. And it's like, yeah. fuck, it's like a movie. Yeah. Especially um, with the boots so it's not slippery. Oh, yeah. Exactly. If you got the right shoes. I tried yeah, to do I was going to say, have you ever slipped on black ice before? Dude, Do I not want to. <laughs> had Sanooks on, just like slip-ons. And uh, yeah. we were at the top of the hill in Reno, and I tried – like taking two steps and slide, like power sliding all the way down this huge hill. Ooh. And uh, I caught a lip of a curb, fucking slammed it on my knee, chipped a bone in my knee, my in my good knee. Um, so it's just got a little floater, but that's what the wrong <laughs> shoes will do. Damn, and being a fucking dude. idiot, I guess. That's uh. more on me than the shoes, but uh, yeah, no blame. <sighs> Yeah, it's brutal. My car slipped out on it, bro, in Missouri. God, you guys <laughs> get like real snow out there, huh? Like it dumped. Like yeah, when I it mean, snows, it snows. Yeah, it definitely can be, and it's just ice central. But yeah, my car slipped out on it, dude. It was crazy. You have four wheel drive, or you like the Tay me can just say fuck it. No, dude. I've I, this is my first car. I didn't even know what I had, man. I, I just <laughs> it got me from point A to point B, yes. and that day it didn't. I got a little <laughs> skate off, man. I went into a ditch or a cornfield. Oh, Thank sh- God it was the ditch because I was taking someone's money away if I fell into that field. But <laughs> yeah, dude, crazy. Did you uh, keep driving, or were you like in the ditch, like had to get pulled oh, no. out? Yeah, I couldn't get out of it. Oh, shit. And my car was kind of dinged up. Like I went into my side of my door pretty hard because it fishtailed and then like i knew at that point i'm like okay i lost control of the car and so i was just praying i was hoping it went left to the ditch thank god it did went just ass first so i kind of like clunked down a little bit but i was like all right that wasn't that bad of a fall fuck were you playing or coaching at the time that was when i was coaching i just went to go visit a friend and i was on my way back home and just damn slipped out that's there's literally no scarier feel. You have no control. You're just like I'm at the will of the co- like. Yeah. You can try and correct, but like if if it's that bad, there's nothing that's gonna save you. Yeah, man. Almost out in the middle of nowhere too. Reception was low, dude. I was tripping for like a good hour before I got everything settled. Jesus, but, that's how people die. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was not, like I had people like driving by the street, like kind of looking at me. I'm like, I'm okay. Keep like just keep on going, but. Yeah, man, it was just kind of like a quiet, just part of Missouri. But yeah, it was all good though. God, Missouri. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's get into it. I I guess we should start with a little bit of MMA news that broke with in the last couple hours. Uh Cain Velasquez getting bail, million dollar bail. Finally, after his third attempt, uh, and if you guys don't know the story, I guess we should break it down a little bit. Uh, <laughs> in March, he got in a car chase and shot into a car uh, that car that he shot into uh, held the abuser of his son. Uh, I guess the guy that was abusing his son worked at like his mom's preschool or something like that. Um, Kane ends up chasing him down the truck, shooting him, cops, or shooting the stepdad, not the guy, injuring the stepdad. Uh, the cops got on the scene, and then Kane just was done immediately. He didn't put up a fight or anything, just laid down on the ground when they pulled him over. Um, so he's been in jail since March, but he finally uh, is getting bail, uh, getting out on bail. But... Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, this story is just kind of fucked from, from start to finish. Uh, it's like there's unfortunately no winners here. Kane gets fucked over trying to be 
a good dad and do the right thing. I think the thing that any of us would have done or similar thing, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, he's out on bail now or will be soon. So I don't know when the trial starts, but that is a good piece of MMA news that is uh, just happening tonight. Uh, and then another... <laughs> Not as serious piece of MMA news, but something that I think that we can follow for a couple months as it develops is the Derek Minner, James Krause betting scandal that's going on. Um, and so do, do either of you guys want to explain? I can if you neither of you guys want to, but uh, want to explain what happened there and all that. Boog, how much do you got on that? Uh, I said Jim because okay. I'm kind of I'm not. Okay. Kev, I mean, you know? Well, I got I got a little piece. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Milner was going in already as the underdog of the fight of his matchup, right? But in our let's say like closing hours of when Milner was supposed to fight, the odds on Milner jumped something like minus two hundred to like minus seven hundred, like something nuts. So it kind of was obviously odd, but a lot of a lot of people started hammering that line but then not only when you hammer that line you can spread it out you know you can go by first round you can right. just take the odd like so people were just putting down a ton of money and winning a ton of money um but yeah basically just milner had a bad knee going in and he's throwing kicks and like wincing as he's kicking like seconds in already so he obviously he got finished in the first round and lost, but yeah, there was just some huge, obviously huge things really starting there with that. Right. But I think that's just kind of like the premise of kind of how it all shook out. Exactly. And so on the surface, that's exactly what it looks like. Just a random guy. Someone gets tipped off at the very end that he may be hurt. Line switches up drastically. It's happened a few times before. Um, but the reason this one is so sketch is because his coach is James Krause. And James Krause uh, just retired from fighting to be a full-time coach, which in any other circumstance wouldn't be that fishy. But in October, the UFC just changed one of their policies on fighters and coaches and people in the no betting. Uh, or not coaches. It was fighters and like broadcasters, I, I think it was coaches actually, um, betting on fights that they're directly competing in. Um, and so they changed that in October. He retires a little bit before that. Um, but now he runs a betting podcast and has a Discord all about betting. And supposedly a month ago, I forget what fight it was, but he took like a huge, huge loss for all of his betters. They lost, I think they said they had over 3 million just of his Discord's money. Which fight? Nate the Train versus like... Yes, Mark Park. Yeah. That's exactly the fight it was. Um, And they lost a shit ton of money on it. So, supposedly, the the thought is here that Krause knew Minner was hurt he leaks the information to his Discord last minute. That's why there's a huge swing. And not only was there the money on him, it was money on a first-round TKO came in in droves as well. And so that's why everyone was like, what the hell? So ESPN first got word of it, uh, and I, I think, I'm not sure if they just went and straight investigated it or uh, it was the betting service, but now the UFC has also launched an investigation into it. Um, so there's going to be a ton to come on that in the future. I'm sure um, whether it be changing the betting even more for not allowed period for coaches and, and fighters or uh, what, but pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Um, yeah. Damn. There's, yeah, and I mean, I feel like most of the time, people that get in trouble aren't betting against their fighters. I mean, there's the classics, Pete Rose, which I think it ended up coming out. He bet against them in a couple games or whatever, but (laughs) most of the time, it's like people betting on or for your fighters, but in this case, it seems like uh, they bet against, which which makes it a lot more serious. Um, Dude, that could be so bad for Krause as a coach. 
right like and if, like if i'm is like if i'm under kraus and i know i just got bet against and like kind of thrown in there like that's pretty rough to go back to the gym and like people might have different thoughts and views if it if this all turns to be true and stuff right especially if you're not one of his boys i mean if you're on the cusp of getting all that attention or not it's like <laughs> there's no way i would i would continue to go there um yeah but again, all of it's very up in the yeah. air. No one knows. It's hearsay as of now. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how this ends up unfolding. I think Boog Meek couldn't be happier that his boy James Krause is in the, in the <laughs> thick of it. Just like how I re- reacted when Moreno won. I mean, dude, it wasn't your belt, homie. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't really think that much of him as a coach. But uh, that's what it, that's what happens, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's get into some inside the ring stuff that's happened since we talked. Um, we had the Arnold Allen Calvin Cater fight or card, actually, the the card as a whole. Um, and there was just a couple fights that I wanted to bring up off the top where I was just far and away completely wrong. (laughs) Uh, And I have to address that. Uh, so Chase Hooper, I mean, Looked abysmal. I just, <laughs> I don't know. What What are your guys' thoughts on that fight? He got dropped, I think, three times in the first minute. Um, finished in the first round. Um, I think it was all his opponent. Honestly, he was, he was like fluctuating weight classes. I think he started thirty five, went to fifty five, and like he kind of settled down. And I think like his dad was his longtime coach, and mm-hmm. he had like both the Winkle Johns or whatever they're. Their name is yeah. both those guys in his corners. And right when I saw the, that, and I was like, Yeah, he's a big Jackson Wink one. guy. And because uh, you can always tell in the pre fight, like, if they're kind of like really, really desperate for a win. And uh, yeah, man, but he was sharp. He like had all the answers. And Hooper just kind of looked honestly like this, the, the weaker, smaller guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he looked like a little kid out there, honestly. Like, it, I hate to say it, but it just looked like one of his first fights where he didn't know how to throw, and he just he got hit a couple times and kind of stalled. But um, that was the first one I was just completely off about. And then Andre Arlovsky, I mean, didn't, didn't do me much better. <laughs> the shit bull, fuck that guy. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I mean, is was there any other fights on that card that you guys uh, you guys saw that you you liked? There was a uh, Khalil Roundtree, and then Dawes versus uh, Delizze was a was a good one too. Yeah, um, nasty knee pop. Yeah, so there was two on that card, right? His and then Calvin's knee popped as well. Yeah, Whew. tough way to go for Cater, man. Uh, right and it's like i don't know where his career goes from here cater because it's like that's gonna take quite some time to recover from and uh yeah i mean he's gonna come back and it's that's a killer's alley that that weight division so he's gonna have to face a beast the first first fight back i thought dirty bird means put up a good fight man against max Payne. better than i thought yeah kind of kind of surprised that was a split decision win for pain because i know i had pain and delete to win and when i was watching it i was like what are we going to judges here like when we started ripping cards off i was like oh my god are we about to get robbed right now pain but yeah, <laughs> no, that one swung that one swung for us um yeah no there's nothing nothing worse than when you hear judge whatever scores it and you're like wait a second yeah. time out time out i'll take a 30 what it what happened <laughs> dude yeah. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I see a couple of those in New York happening this weekend. New York notoriously has shitty judging, and I would not be surprised to see uh, a couple of those. But uh, on that note, Kev, you were the only one to hit the parlay. Ooh, I mean, I know some of you guys went lofty with a lot of legs, but me was going for a big homer. But, <laughs> yeah, I just kept those money lines. I felt the lead say was my, my most confident, but... 
Shit, man. Once we, like I said, once we went split for Max Payne, I was like, oh, come on now. Right. Um, yeah, but I think you're right. I think we gotta gotta shrink down the parlays, and every time we hit, we expand. You hit, you expand. Exactly. You got a little more money to play with. You got exactly. a little more dice to roll. Um, but so I think that kind of covers the Calvin Cater card. I don't know where Arnold Allen goes. Unfortunately, uh, I think his stock rises a little bit, but with Cater getting injured and it not being a full fight, kind of tougher to tell. Um, but again, He's I got the streak though. Exactly. So Max Holloway. Wow. I, I like that. And I think it's a test. I think it's a test for Allen where if he does, if he loses, he doesn't lose that much stock. It's Max Holloway. But for yeah. Max Holloway, it's a guy that he has to beat to, to get another Good. shot at the belt. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't, <laughs> these Max and Volk fights are, yeah. are getting a little tired. Yeah. I think or Josh Ar- or Emmett. Ooh. That's not Either bad. Or. What were you going to say, Book? I said if Max and, and Arnold Allen fight, I think Arnold Allen's the one that finally puts him on his ass, puts him down, finishes him. Really? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. He was landing on Cater. He had that step in left. I mean, he was landing. He definitely won the first round. Um, But, yeah, man, I just think, I mean, he has Frost and Javi, great coaches, Leon. Like, he trains with Leon and all those people. So, I really think, I mean, and he's – you know, switched on, doesn't have a lot of outside stuff, not really known that much. So, like, he's, I think he's going to be next. Undefeated in the UFC, too. Yeah. Which is huge. And yeah. I think at some point, Max's chin has to go. I feel like all those, like, Hawaiian or, like, even Mark Hunt, I know he's New Zealand or whatever, Australian, I forget where the fuck he's from. Um, but they all have chins, and it's like at some point, it's got to go. You know what I mean? Like BJ Penn exactly. couldn't get knocked out forever. And then all of us, it was like, boom, every fight. So I hope that's not the case for Max, but he has taken some damage in his career to where it's like, may, may catch up. I, hasn't he taken the most? Uh, I think that is. Think yeah. The most significant there. strikes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is a crazy, I, I would like to see his given plus taken significant strikes. It's got to be like, yeah. Wild. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, the Cater versus Allen fight. And then we had uh, the Limoges versus Rodriguez. Um, not going to lie, just watched a couple fights off that card. Wasn't wasn't super invested. Uh, I did see that, I think it was Neil Magny had a nice sub. Um, what do you think of D-Rod? you guys think he's legit, or do you think he just kind of got lucky off of uh, his last win and then was riding high in this? Look, me? That's... Or Kev? Go ahead, Kev. Okay. I mean, I was going to say, I mean, Magni is still good. D-Rod, I mean, a lot of, like, pretty good potential matchups for D-Rod to look good. And D-Rod's not a young guy. I mean, he's like 35-ish. Um but Magny, dude, his 20th win in the welterweight division, most ever. Like, he just broke GSP. Oh. Damn, so, I like, didn't realize that. This dude is a G. Like, it's going to be wild that, like, if the UFC doesn't put him in the Hall of Fame, but he has the most wins ever in a division. Like, to me, that's just like a pencil in. Like, I... defi- just despite no titles, nothing. But... Yeah, no, I mean, I think Magny gets a nice little boost. Someone maybe in the top, like like at nine, ten, you know, give or take, to see if maybe he's got a little, Tom a little run in him. Ooh, <laughs> Sean Brady. There you go. That's a perfect one, too, because you lose to Brady, you're out. Right. And you Brady, know? I feel like that's a good stylistic matchup for, I mean, both of them, but for Brady, too. It kind of gives him something to work with. If he's stupid, plays around, he's going to get caught. You know what I mean? Both guys have something they can do there in that fight. Yeah. Look, Meek, I like that a lot. Sean Brady. Um, uh, also, shout out Pauliana Viana for uh, that KO, quick KO, 40 seconds. I mean, looking good doing it, too. <laughs> well, funny you bring her up. Uh, I think you have another connection with her, or at least your boy does. Colby, right? Yep, chaos, baby. More like fingers in the butt. 
<laughs> uh, for you guys that don't know, I guess Pollyanna said that Colby liked fingers in the butt and she was not about it and he got all mad at her. Classic. It sounds like Boog Meek to me, but But they did they did they did uh well rumor has it she had some residue on her shirt, so she had to get a chaos shirt. That's that's, that's the rumor around uh that's the rumor on the Twitter. <laughs> that's foul. Um but then uh Limoges won as well. Let's see. Um do do do. I think that's really it. That was kind of, of a finish. what? A lot of finishes okay. for sure. But uh kind of a snoozer as far as who was on the card, unfortunately. Um But I think that brings us up to uh, two eighty one. Which, if you ask me, is better than 280. 280 had probably two fights that were better than all these, but or at least on paper. But uh, 281 stacked from top to bottom. What? Are, any thoughts? Just right out the gate, Kev. Well, I was just I was just checking the card, maybe like right before we started. But yeah, I did not realize like you just intro, man. Like first fights, Carlos Olman coming out of the gate light heavyweight like that's a real good i mean if some people don't know who carlos Holman is but i mean hardcore fans like this guy's on a win streak solid light heavyweight ckb guy but uh yeah man i mean you got dominic reyes on a prelim like that's a huge return and i was just i never even knew that was going down so yeah it's huge it's gonna be a great card i think Right, sneaky good. Um, Boog, what about you? You got any fights that just jump out right off the top of the eye that at the average yeah. person might not have uh, realized? Um, that was nuts that uh, Reyes and Span aren't on the uh, main card. I didn't know that, but uh, I think um, look for uh, look for Petrovsky versus Terman to be a a barn burner. Um, Petrovsky, I. I think he's just really well, well-rounded, ultimate fighter guy. Choked, choked Maximoff off, Maximoff out quick, and then uh, the other guy, Terman, um, he trains with Pereira and Teixeira, so you know, iron sharpens iron. So that's gonna be potential fight of the night right there. Um, I like that call, and Petrovsky's a Henzo Henzo Gracie Philly, so. Um, about as legit as they come on the ground. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely going to be a, a banger at 185. I guess we'll we'll start from the the top. I Kev said it. Olberg versus uh, Negaranu, I think his name is. Um, that's going to be 205 to start the card. City kickboxing for Olberg. Um, but I feel like City kickboxing is one of those teams where I mean, aside from Izzy. It's like they feed off of the other guy's energy. You know what I mean? Big time. Izzy kind of do with his own thing. But I feel like for Hooker and Riddell, uh, Olberg's fight's going to be a, a huge way to start the night. Um, I think he's he's a minus 125 dog. That's the other thing about this card. There's a lot of close matchups. There's... Not too many people that are uh, heavily favored. I mean, there's a couple spread out, but uh seem like Vegas doesn't want to lose their ass on this card. Um, but so, yeah, you got Olberg uh, and then uh, Negaranu. And then the next fight is Frivola versus Azatar. And this fight was one that was supposed to happen in Abu Dhabi a year ago. And then do you remember what happened? That wasn't the, the bag situation. <laughs> yeah, so he got pulled from the card. Exactly, he got kicked out of the UFC. Yeah. So Otman Azaitar, I forget. I, I think that's how you say his last name. Who's favored here? Uh, minus one twenty over Favola, who's minus one hundred five. Uh, he, <laughs> they were at uh, what you call it, Abu Dhabi Fight Island, and it was back when the pandemic was still pretty pretty popping and. People on his team were caught taking off their wristbands and giving them to other people. And then, oh shit. Right. And then another guy, I don't, I, they never really disclosed what happened or who it was, but uh, 
a guy was caught walking from like uh, like window ledge to window ledge, like across four window ledges with a bag over his shoulder, goes into Ottman's room. I does who knows what. No one knows what was in the bag. Uh, his manager, Ali Abdelaziz, said it was potatoes. Nice. Um, <laughs> but then the guy who brought the bag changes clothes uh, and then dips out. So no one knew what happened, but uh, he ended up getting kicked out of the UFC for, I think it was like three, four months. But he was he's undefeated. There's no way they were letting him go. Um, so he's back and for Vola, who was who he was supposed to fight back then. So now the fight's finally on. Um, but crazy. Yeah. A lot of, lot of history, a lot of times. So these, these guys are going to know each other, uh, very well, which I think sometimes makes for a, uh, a slow fight. You know what I mean? A lot of overthinking things and that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I, it'll be interesting to see what ends up happening there. Um, um, Ali Abdul Aziz, man, he sucks. <laughs> don't don't associate. If you're an upcoming fighter listening to this pod, <laughs> stay away. Uh, I do the opposite. Go get in there with Al- Ali. He, <laughs> he'll get you to the top. Um, no. So then I think uh, after that fight is Petrovsky versus Terman. Uh, we kind of went over that a little bit. Uh, I think Petrovsky ends up subbing him. Um, and the over under on that is one and a half. I think you take the under. I don't know why. I feel like Petrovsky just gets them while they're they're not so slippery and uh, subs them. Um, how do you think that one goes, Kev? I'll go, I'll piggyback uh, with that thought. I haven't seen with we're talking about Petrovsky, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I haven't. I know he's an ultimate fighter guy, like Book said, but yeah, I mean, he seems like there's a lot of hype behind him. Um, I think I caught his last win, so I don't have too much info on him, but I mean, another another win here for him, especially if you go under and that hits. Like, I mean, any finish is good, but if you can get it under the first, like, eight minutes of the fight, that's, like, the best case scenario. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and Book, you taking Petrovsky, you taking Terman? Um, you said fight of the night, but you didn't really say which which way. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. I'm uh, I'm gonna go Petrovsky by decision. Ooh, okay, taking the long road. So, um, which is honestly, I feel like if if it doesn't happen in the, you know, what I mean, the first yeah. first round, it's it's probably gonna go long. Um, but I like uh, term term and uh, those guys at Teixeira are. Crazy. I mean, all of them have gotten significantly better in the last year and a half. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see if if he uh, comes out just the same. Um. Okay. Next fight, we got our first girl fight. Um, I don't know if it's the first. The first one that somewhat matters. Uh, Molly McCann got a little steam behind her versus uh, Aaron Blanchfield. Look, how are we thinking? You think uh, Molly McCann? Keeps the uh, momentum going. She's a big dog here, plus 300. I'm going with, with Meatball Molly, baby. I'm, I'm sticking on the train. Sticking on the train. <laughs> Poor noise going to be there. Pretty you think? sure. Oh, it's New York. Why wouldn't he be? Um, yeah. Um, I, got, I, got, I got Molly. You got the Meatball. Nice. Kev. I finished. Wow. But yeah, I think he's. That's if if Molly's gonna win, it's gonna be by finish. I feel like that's kind of her game. She's she'll lose wars, but win by finish. Kev, uh, what what are you thinking here? She's on a three fight win streak, and Blanchfield's on a six fight win streak. I was gonna say when you see odds in MMA and you're going three hundreds, like you know those odds in MMA you usually are gonna hit. So yeah, this this is a classic case of like everyone knows Molly. Not a lot of people know Blanchfield, who right. you just said is on a six-fight win streak. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's usually a six-fight win streak in a female division. You should be fighting for a belt. So, yeah, well, she's three might... and zero in the UFC. So, six fights out or three fights outside the UFC. But gotcha. I mean, okay, even still, then, coming though. in three and zero, yeah, in the UFC, and already what twelfth in the ranks. So, like, this will be good. 
you beat McCann, you're looking up, and f- female division from 12, that's probably two fights if you win, and you could be right in the belt talk. Um, no, definitely. And I feel like if she beats McCann, she steals a lot of that momentum and thunder away from her. There's going to be a ton of eyes um, yeah. on this fight. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it'll it be interesting. I think Blanchfield, like you said, this is one of those where it's like plus 300. You're starting to get into that. Uh, is it even possible territory? You know what I mean? It's edging along there. Obviously, anything is in MMA. But I think Blanchfield ends up uh, – taking the decision unfortunately i think it's a good fight um i think people still end up fucking loving meatball but uh she'll she'll cut a good promo walking out but uh she'll scrap she'll scrap she's definitely exactly that's the thing she's gonna put on a show she might get knocked out but it's gonna be uh it's gonna be sick uh book what was more cringeworthy Molly McCann taking the belt and and getting on top of the cage, or Carla Esparza wearing it down the aisle. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I think I think Carla's was justified because she just won it. Although the fight was one of the worst ever, I didn't think that was that cringe. But oh, Molly McCann. I mean, if you spin an elbow of someone into the shadow realm, I don't give a damn what you do. I mean, <laughs> give it a bell. Who gives a damn? I mean, people hate and kids fucking hate, dude. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm surprised you don't have a replica belt. I, I feel like that should have been a, a bug meat purchase, I, uh, just always around the show. Covington, Covington Mazadal fight. I went to the Las Vegas fight shop and uh, belt was taken out and looked at and uh, heavily, heavily considered. But uh, no, down the road, I will. Love if it. not a real one. <laughs> Uh, exactly the real one. Get the man his strap. Um, Kev, what was more cringeworthy? You, I mean, I know you're on more on board with me that that Carla Esparza. That's fucking brutal, dude. I didn't even see that. Just hearing that, like, no, <laughs> come on, Carla. Like, if you want to like show it at a table, post, you know, the I do's, but to walk <laughs> down with it. Uh, Come on. It was what? it was bad. And I think uh yeah, she she walked out not with it on and then they put it on her at the end of the aisle. But uh Oh god. Ooh, yeah, so it was like a whole to do, but covered her belly, so I guess uh win win for her. Mm. <laughs> um and then okay, so we got two more prelims that honestly both of these could be on the main card, if you ask me. Um, but Dom Reyes, Ryan Span, Dom Reyes coming back. I think he's been out for a little bit over a year. Three fight loss streak. Um, everyone he's lost to is good, though. He's lost to Yuri, Jan, and John. And yeah, champions. Exactly, all champs. Um, but before that, he was on a just a tear. Um, and then Ryan Span uh, coming up. Or more so than Dom Reyes, uh, he's plus one seventy here. Um, Kev, what do you think about this fight? It's interesting because you've got a long layoff, and then you're off three L's. So it's it's kind of tough to kind of find some levels of optimism. But Reyes, I don't think is terribly old. Right, you know, he's not. 30, he's 30, he's 30. young. Yeah, give take. So like, it, you've got like still a lot of good athletic prime ahead of you. Um, and I mean, Reyes, I mean, you guys know, I mean, he's huge, big, long, like can definitely cause a guy like span some problems. I feel like Reyes is a much better athlete. So definitely. he might be able to move and manipulate the cage better than span, but span has shown that if he gets you, it could be, it could be a real devastating punch that changes the fight. So I think with Reyes, it might be more kind of move to find the shot where span's going to be just planted feet. He's going to find himself ready, probably with just the power right hand to try and just clean up. Cause Reyes, I think he's a southpaw. So you've got that, that switch up matchups where the Orthodox guys got that opening. So I would look for that. If span is going to get this done, something with the right. Um, yeah. And I, I like what you said there with Dom being a lefty. I think that's, that's big in this matchup um, because I think he, he can keep him at bay with that, uh, with that jab a little bit more so and just, just bury it to the body. Um, 
But I think you're totally right. He's got to just keep moving around more, make it kind of a boring fight. I, I hate to say that, but with guys like this that have that much power, it's like you got to use your length where you have it. Um, and it's I don't think he has too much length on him here, but still, I, he's definitely one of those guys. Um, Boog, how about you? Um, yeah, I, I kind of agree with Kev. Um, like Dom Reyes, I think – with his losses, I think he took the time he's took taken off, like has helped him kind of learn a lot from it. And, uh, I mean, all this talks being about city kickboxing, having four guys on the card. I mean, to share his, uh, team Reyes has been training within this whole training camp. So they got three guys on this card. So Ooh. there you go with that. And, um, so yeah, I think, I don't know. I think Span's kind of a level, kind of not top notch yet. Like he like kind of got humbled by Anthony Smith a couple fights ago. I don't know if he's had a fight since that. I think he's but, had um, one since. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think Dom Dom gets it done. I think he finishes him. I think uh, he's got that power layoff. Who he's been training with? I think uh, he's got kind of a, a little bit of a desperation kind of we got a couple other guys coming up that have that same de desperation factor that uh they need to win so i think i think dom reyes gets it done right and uh span's last fight was a win versus kutelaba um mm. was that a finish or a f decision no it was a finish wasn't it i think so yeah i do believe I you... um but yeah, no, Dom, I, I think there's a big difference in the UFC between three fight losing streak and a four fight losing streak. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it doesn't seem like that's one fight, but in the loss column it, at four fights, you got to start scrolling down to find the green W's. Um, yeah. so it's a little scary. Uh, he's had some tactics in the past Dom Reyes though, that I don't quite agree with like the fight i think it was after the john jones fight he put his three brothers in his corner i'm yeah. like what the fuck are you? you just fought the goat fought him better than probably anybody ever had a lot of people say um and then you go and switch things up i i mean i don't know he's his career trajectory is kind of gone up and down but uh i think with a, a win here it kind of puts him obviously back on the right path um but he's still young, light heavyweights. They they can go for, for quite some time. So, um, I also like Dom Reyes. I think he gets a first round finish. I, something about me tells tells me he's gonna come out just old Dom swinging. And like Boog said, he's been with uh, oh. Glover and the boys. And I think Pajeda brings something to the striking there that is just different. Whether or not he wins is something else. But I think what he brings to the camp is uh is big. Ooh. You guys are high on Reyes, man. I dude, it's I hate the do theory, but that's Reyes is fucking do. If anybody in the UFC is, it's got to be him. Yeah. Um, but like you said, Span's got the the light switch. He Dom can get knocked out. We've we've seen it before. When he goes out, he goes out. So <laughs> as long as he makes it a boring fight, I think he can win. Um, but I. I don't think he's going to do that. I think he goes out, just blitzes him. And if that's the thing, he might gas after one and get finished. Who knows? I suck at calling fights, anyways. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't know uh, Reyes was in Connecticut, though. That's a good little fact, though. But... That is a nice fact, dude. All those guys kind of look the same, like same build, just like <laughs> fucking, yeah, yeah, just massive humans. Um, yeah. A lot of length in that camp. Uh, Shoot. So from there, we got our featured prelim of the night. Um, our second city kickboxing fighter, Brad Riddell. And, Book, I don't know if you watched the Ariel Helwani this week. Did you watch it? He had all the. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So he had all the city kickboxing guys. He had Eugene, the coach. He had Olberg, Hooker, Riddell, and Adesanya on. And, God, he humanizes them. I. It makes them hard to hate. I I hate to say that. Makes them hard to hate. Eugene, it, just all of them. I yeah. I was not a fan of any of them, and now after watching that, I'm like, God damn it! I like all of them. <laughs> um, but uh, Brad Riddell is who's fighting this fight versus Hinato Moicano. Um, 
how do you guys see this one going? You think it stays on the feet? You think it goes to the ground book? What are, what are your thoughts? Just right off the, um, the jump. I think uh, I'm leaning towards Moicano here. Really? Um, Why? I mean, I think, I think, well, one, I know Rydell's coming off two bad losses. Um, right. Got caught the I last mean, the one, one. The one to Jalen Turner, I mean, was quick. I mean, you can't get dominated as badly as he did there. Um, but uh, I just think, I mean, Moicano took that Dos Anjos fight on short notice and, like, he's been calling out everyone. I think he's a, another guy on the, that path where it's just like, I'm in the gym every day. I'm in shape. I'm ready to fight. You call me. I'm ready to go. So even though I think – with Rydell, I think the desperation is more of a pressure. I think you kind of see that in his, like, stance. He's kind of stiff. So, um, and he really hasn't dealt with pressure very well, obviously, in his last two fights. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go Moicano. Nice. You think he subs him on the feet? Moicano loves his rear naked chokes, or do you think uh, he takes it by decision? Uh, I think I'm going to go. Uh, or. Knock him out. Lean Just the unthinkable. In, the decision, Tiger Muay Thai uh, guy gets knocked. Maybe a. Uh, I mean, shit. Rydell's coming off getting finished twice. So give me a give me a third round finish, bro. Wow, I love finish. it. Third round Finny. Kev, what do you think about this Dono's fight? Going off his eve. Oh, Fazeev got him good too, man. Yes. Fazeev got Moicano? him good too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Fazeev yeah. got Rydell. Um, yeah. Same thing with Turner, dude. Or with Turner, excuse me. He was just kind of just taking pictures. Bang, lights out. Um, but dude, I piggyback a lot of what you said, Bug. I after watching Moicano against Dos Anjos, I mean, I was sold. I mean, this guy, you know, is he's a dog, man, and he's big. He's pretty, you know, long, lean. So I, I like the matchup stylistically for Moicano as well. Again, but this is only a three round fight. Um, so I look for I look for high pace in this fight for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of with Boog. And if I, I would say Moicano, I would go knockout again. I think I'm kind of, like I said, with Boog making that a third streak. Um, but I mean, there is some desperacy in the corner for Riddell, obviously, because he was a 145-er. And now yeah. he's bumping up to lightweight. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been a rough go. So yeah, he, you want to start out 0-3 in a fresh you know, because it's not a fresh coat of paint anymore. Exactly. Now you're, you know, now there's nowhere to go. Um, to maybe the UFC. Yeah, no, that's a, a good point. Uh, I This one, it seems like the money's right down the middle uh, for Vegas. I, I know Riddell's minus 100 and Hanato is minus 120. So they're definitely not losing their ass here. But... Uh, I, I think I, I go with you guys. I, I think I'm going to go rear naked choke. I don't know which round um, for Moicano, but uh, I, something tells me R Riddell just doesn't have venom. I know he went back to Thailand for a good portion before he uh, finished off his, his camp at City Kickboxing. Um, but something tells me he just... I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think he's lost a step or two, but I just think Moicano's better. Um and I think it's going to get to the ground, and I think uh, the jujitsu is going to going to prevail as it always does, because it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that one uh, I see that one as another a good fight. I don't think it's fight of the night, but uh, I think Brad shows us some. I don't think he goes out as quick as he did his last fight. Um, at least I hope not. But uh, that's. That's our prelims. Again, those are just the prelims. That's a fucking stack. That could have been a fight night in itself right there, honestly. Yeah. That's better than the last card uh, we oh, saw. Yeah. But uh, now we move into the main event. We get started. Uh, Puyelas? Puyelas? I don't know. Is fighting Dan Hooker. Um, Hooker minus 170. Poyas plus 135. I think the UFC is throwing Hooker a little bit of a bone here. He's He's been a guy for them for quite some time. He's on a little bit of a, a tough streak. Um, but I think he, he handles this guy and looks like vintage Dan Hooker here. Um, Kev, what do you what do you think about this fight? Are you thinking uh, Dan does it? Are you thinking 
he uh, continues his his streak of L's. It's funny how you kind of brought up with uh, how you think like the UFC's kind of thrown him a bone here. And I just immediately thought of like, what happens if Claudio? I think is that his first name. I think so. Yes. Yes. Okay, we'll go. I'll just roll with Claudio because that last name's gonna be tough for me. But <laughs> yeah, Claudio, yeah, you're right. If Claudio gets it done though, and the UFC's trying to throw you a bone. It's you're tough. in also a really tough spot because he flirted with 145. Arnold Allen said, go eat your burgers and go back <laughs> up. Um, but damn, dude. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about Claudio, but again, Dan's always going to be a pretty dynamic guy. Um, but if I'm going for a pick, I, I want to see Hooker win. But pick-wise, I'll, I would go upset and say Claudio's. I wow. think we might get someone to sleep in on him. And this guy just kind of lets it fly and just goes for broken three rounds. I like that. Claudio, he's kind of on the same path as Patty the Batty. Obviously not as big of a superstar or anything by that means, but fought a couple of the same guys. It seems like the UFC is trying to build them up a little bit. That's why this kind of scares me because I'm like, fuck, is this... I don't know who they're setting up here, um, yeah. but it seems they're like a, him on a pay per view too. So he's got to be decent. Exactly. So it's a big jump up from his his last opponents, but uh, would definitely be interesting to see. Uh, Book Book thoughts on uh, this guy here. Um, yeah, I uh, I'm going to agree with you, Jim. I think I think Hooker. Uh, I think this like. Having the, the camp with all those city kickboxing guys, I think that's going to help him. Um, I think he's kind of missed that. I think uh, Eugene, their coach, kind of alluded to that in his interview. And also, I just before this, I was watching Dan's portion of his uh, interview. And uh, I think he's in a good space. I think he needed kind of what happened to, to happen. Right. And uh, I think that was kind of what he was explaining it as, is like he kind of – took the role and said, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to listen to anyone's advice. I'm just going to go with what I feel. And I guess I think now he's kind of more grounded and more listening to people around him who have his, have his best interests at mind and kind of like are ones that tell him like, Hey, maybe you shouldn't do this. Maybe you should do that. So I think, you, I think losses help him kind of help Don Reyes has losses helped him and I think he gets it done finished. Yeah, um, definitely. And I like what you said about their camp. I I was listening to that Ariel, and Eugene said he brought it up, and then Ariel brought it up with every other guy after. Um, but he said there was a moment in camp where Eugene, the city kickboxing head coach, said that they were complacent, and he said that he just – it ate at him, ate at him. So he just fucking let him have it. Um, he said he flipped the switch. He said he doesn't get angry, doesn't like showing that side, but – He said he just ate into them. They were doing, instead of eight five-minute rounds, they were doing 12, 15 five-minute rounds. He had to sit down and have a talk with them, and it was a big thing. And like like you said, I think uh, Hooker needed that. It's uh, one of those things where he said, he he even said he was doing everything on his own, wanted to do everything his way, and he got his ass handed to him. So unfortunately it happened, but might might be the best thing to ever happen in his career. Um, And I feel like a lot of times that, that does happen, um, but uh, who do you who do you think wins? So you say Hooker. You think he finishes yeah. him, or I I think I kind of like what Kev was saying with like how he's like kind of throwing a bone and kind of asked to win this. I think Hooker's kind of like a cowboy in a way, right? Kind of uh, I think like like you, you can use him to build him build guys up. You can like throw him bones every now and th- now and again. So I think this one he gets it done, but. Uh, yeah, I think he's definitely going to be like a cowboy kind of kind of fighter. Few few headlines here and there, few uh, few big fights. Right, and he always has the the striking to put put people away. So it's like if mm-hmm. if someone does fuck around, they're gonna they're gonna find out. Um, now, if he loses, book you you said earlier in the week he loses, he goes home. You you think the UFC gives him the old boot if he? Uh, I think more Rydell okay. goes with a loss. That makes um, more I think sense. Hooker could could possibly stay, but I mean, five in a row. That's a that's tough, a, tough look. That's different, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, and it depends on the fight. I mean, like if you bring it and like you get KO'd in the fire, I mean, it's a good show. So, um, yeah. Well, and the other thing I was thinking about his last four. You know who his last four L's were? Think about this. 
Allen, Arnold Allen, Dustin Poirier, Michael Chandler, Islam Makhachev. Those yeah. are his last four L's. So it's like, yeah, it's shitty, but I feel like he's in the same same sort of case as Dom Reyes. You've lost the four guys who could, or either were the champs, are the champ, or could be the champ. It's like uh, just the shit show. For a title. Right? I, I, yeah. yeah. So and one of them's the champ now. That's, that's what I mean. Exactly. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so it's it's shitty, but it's like uh, I guess that's that's the fight game. Um. Just just fucking murderers row again. Uh. But yeah, I I like Hooker more at this weight class than uh. What you call it's, uh, forty five. Forty five. Um, uh, but yeah, so I think uh me and Bud go hooker there. Kev went Claudio. Oh, Claudio. I with Claudio. I mean strong I like points it. though, boys. You almost <laughs> swung me to hooker. I mean you almost hooked me in. But uh yeah, I'm gonna stick with Claudio. Let's go Peru, baby. I like that. Claudio. Let it ride. Come on, Kev. Give us give us a give us a go at that last name. Come on. <laughs> Claudio Puyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was spot on. You Kev, you nailed it. That might be a drop every time he fights. So I'm going to hit the Puyeus button. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so next fight we have uh, Frank the Tank Edgar versus Chris Gutierrez. This is Frankie's retirement fight. Um, they did not throw him any bones here. No bones were thrown in the making of this fight. I don't know who he pissed off, but uh, he's getting a dog in Chris Gutierrez. Um yeah, I think Gutierrez is going to attack the legs. It's the, the game plan. Just immobilize Frankie. It's all he wants to do is move. But if you attack the legs and then slow him, slow him, and then eventually I think uh, Gutierrez gets the finish here. I don't know what round, but uh, actually, you know, I think he'll go decision. I think Frankie rides it out for his final fight. Doesn't go down, but I don't see him getting the win. Kev, you see Frankie going out on top or uh, you see him? No. No. I mean, I think I think Frankie is the bone that's getting thrown right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Carlos G, like you said, man, he is legit. Um, yeah, you hope not to see a finish on the Edgar side unless he's winning it. Uh, right. Especially for his last time in New York. Um, but, I mean, that said, Gutierrez can, can do that. But, like you said, man, I'm definitely heavy Gutierrez in this one. Yeah, and he's riding, I think, a six-fight win streak into this fight. Uh, minus two thirty. Um, yeah, Boog, what do you what are you thinking about, Frank? You like his odds here, plus one seventy-five. You know, for the sake of this like argument, kind of this feels like Sunday night football, and everyone picks the same team. <laughs> so I'm, for the sake of it, I'm gonna go Frankie decision. But uh, I think if Gutierrez finishes, I think he's gonna do it. Kick or knee to the body. Oof, that's Ooh. a tough way to end a career. Just fucking yeah. hunched over. <laughs> Doesn't even go on a knockout. Just immobilized. Um, honestly, I mean, I think you're right. He sets up the uh, the body kicks, just going to the leg, leg, and then takes one a little bit higher. Um, that could be it because he kicks like a fucking mule. Um, <laughs> yeah, I. I hate to say it. Frankie's a legend. He's fought at every weight class that is conceivably possible for him to get to. Um, he's lost four of his last five, though. I, I think this is a, a good way for him to go out. Um, I don't like how a lot of guys don't know it's their last fight. You know what I mean? They they just fight, and then they're like, fuck, now it's over. I mean, they don't realize. I think it's good that he can drink it all in and uh, – have a good last fight week with no no worries about it. Um, Hopefully it makes for a good camp, too, if you know it's your last. Right, exactly. Lay it all yeah. out. There's nothing. Yep. Ain't got to save any in the tank. That's a good point. Um, but I saw I saw a couple professionals picking Frankie to win this. I don't know if that's because they just respect him or, or what, but uh, I have seen, seen some people picking Frankie. Um, the next fight should be the... Co-main, five rounds. It's not. It's a three-round. Kind of works in the fans' favor, honestly. It being a three-round fight, obviously a five would have been nice. Um, 
to let these guys go, but I think you see action right from the get here. And that's with Dustin Poirier, Mike Chandler, Boog. What are you thinking with these two men? This is going to be crazy. I'm uh, I'm liking Chandler here. Chandler is what I describe him as bombs early. I mean, he's freaking hopping back and forth, and you're getting left and right hooks coming, switch stances. Um, I mean, this is basically the Gaethje port the Gaethje. Chandler fight last year, like this is just gonna be a clash of freaking titans. But um, I mean, Poirier has never lost two in a row. I know our our good pal Jacob Flores is always the first one to point that out. But uh, I think there's a first time for everything, and I think uh, your hot sauce can only take you so much. And uh, <laughs> using your using your kid as a prop. Oh so Christ! So, uh, <laughs> now, does this pick JK, have? JK, <laughs> I was quoting the great Colby Covington. Everybody. I, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go Chandler here. Finish. Chandler by finish. Now, does this pick have anything to do with the Conor McGregor? Any... Um, no. Like my dislike for Poirier. Yeah, or... exactly. You disliking Poirier, so you're picking no, Chandler. I I think no. I think. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Poirier is a dog. I'll give it to him. And I know Kev loves the wide back. I know he loves all that. But, uh... <laughs> I haven't had my piece yet. Baby. He's got the elbow back. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go. I think Chandler gets it done for old Hap and Ace, whatever the hell those those kids are named. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. You know, I do like I, – I think if he does do it, it's going to be a first-round finish. He, Like you said, he throws – Bombs away from start to finish. He's a little bowling ball. Um, and he's got a chin. We, we've seen him get clipped and, and come back. Um, Kev, what, do you, what are you thinking? Let's Book, we'll give Kev his piece now since you, <laughs> since you already bestowed it for him. <laughs> well, no, I'm actually, I'm kind of liking Chandler, but on a different reason. I think Chandler might actually wrestle Poirier. Mm. I think Chandler is significantly better. And I think... Chandler has to have a little bit of smarts going into this. Like, you, if you brawl and lose, like, a lot of really big fights for him can come off the table. But if he can just – if he can win against Poirier, I mean, and maybe not just keep it wrestling all night and kind of low-key snooze the fans, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a – let's – because Chandler's gas tank for three rounds is not going to be – like a problem at all right i think he can get poirier tired in the third i think if you wrestle enough get him down wrestle enough get him down force him up get him down force him up and you still got enough power in your hands to go for the kill that might be where it happens down the line but i would like to th- hopefully think or see that chandler goes wrestling uh in his offense yeah um i definitely obviously chandler's got the the better wrestling he's a collegiate wrestler um, the only thing that scares me is I feel like Dustin's has decent takedown D. Um, obviously, there's there's levels, and we'll we'll see where they're at that night. But um, I feel like Chandler's wrestling is better than no Chandler's. Excuse me, Poirier's wrestling is better than Chandler's boxing, and I think that's why Poirier gets the job done. I think he can. Stuff the takedowns just enough. I think he keeps it moving. I think he, uh, I think he tags Chandler on the feet. I for some reason Chandler just likes getting pieced up. I, I see him getting hurt. Um, I don't know if it's going to be early or like the second, but I see him just just wearing one for some reason. Um, but he's another guy. I don't know where I don't know where the loser of this fight goes. Uh, but the winner of this fight, who do, who do you where do you think he goes? Do you, do you give it to Benny and let them fight it out if if you can't find uh, if Islam or if Charles doesn't want to fight right away? What do you do with the winner of this fight? I don't know because I feel like you got Benny Charles is the matchup, right? But Charles is saying he wants to take a little bit of time. Yeah, you know, so you can get that like March, maybe February. I don't know for that Benny Charles, but I mean, I personally, that's just the matchup I like, but yeah, it is interesting. Cause like one of these guys, they can't fight Gaethje. Nope. 
you know, like what do we, I mean, I mean, for Z, I don't even know, but it is odd. I don't know. Right. I'm you hearing, can't put them at I'm a hearing right rumblings of, You're hearing rumblings of the USC of doesn't want Volk and Makachev and they want the winner of Poirier Chandler to get the first crack at Makachev. Well, which, which fight do you think brings in more money? Do you think it's Volk or do you think it's one of the two? I mean, the, the Volk going runs. for two belts in his home freaking country is right. You can't really write it better, but I mean, I don't know. It's what the UFC wants. Like, I think, cause like you did the whole octagon thing. So it's like, you made that fight. Everyone thinks that fight's made. Right. But, uh, well, what I'm hearing, like Ariel Hawani's alluding to it. It's been on Twitter. Like they've gone back and forth. Contracts aren't signed, so you never know. Yeah, I mean, and I, like you said, they're on Twitter both saying, "Are you a man of your word?" Are you? And it's like, just fucking sign it then. All right, <laughs> like st- stop the bullshit um, because it really does put the whole weight class in limbo if. If they're not, yeah. you know what I mean, you got to start making moves one way or another. Um, but yeah, Kev, I, I agree with what you said, though. I think Benny Charles is definitely, you stick with that fight. There's no reason to break that up. Um, that seems like the best stylistic matchup. Winner goes back and gets gets a shot at the belt. Um, but well, we'll see. Dustin, yeah, Dustin and Chandler, I think they both got to get a couple wins before they uh, go back for the belt. Um, okay. Well, we got two fights left. Um, our bathroom break is up next. Um, and this is <laughs> Wei Li Zhang versus Carla Esparza. Um, <laughs> now, if I'm wrong with this bet, yeah. we might stop the podcast. This might be done for good. I have Wei Li Zhang winning. She's minus 400. Um, she freaking... Got Francis in a, <laughs> it was it was like a single leg, but lifted him up. That guy is like three hundred pounds. Uh, she just looks ready. She hits the pads. It sounds like a dude hitting pads. It's just different. Um, Asparza didn't show me shit in her last fight. I don't think she should be the champ, honestly. Um, but yeah, what what are, what are your guys' thoughts here? Um, you know, I think I think I see how everyone kind of feels that way that way Lee's kind of going to run through her um but uh I think the champ's the champ for a reason I mean you saw what Rose did to uh Wei Li and then she was too afraid to engage because she knew <laughs> she knew what the ground was like with us with uh Sparza and uh I'm gonna go with Sparza by good old decision man five rounds riding her out like a horse that is that's 30 minutes of just miserable miserable time hey man cookie monster baby oh, i'm gonna throw on the costume <laughs> <laughs> kev what are you what are your thoughts on this uh this gay i uh even i think even if carl is able to get way lee to the ground just like you were saying jim i think way lee's gonna be strong enough to get out because when Carla's been on the ground, she's just kind of like, there's not a whole lot of offense really going on. It's more just controlling the body, which I guess essentially is offense, but it's not a damaging right. piece of offense. So, like, the way Lee's able to get this back up to the feet, yeah, I think there's a lot more dynamic with, obviously, Wei Lee. So, um, I would pick Wei Lee for sure. Nice. Yeah, and I think Wei Lee can almost do the Derek Lewis, like, I'm just going to stand up now. Like, I'm not on the ground. You know what I mean? Like, not technical at all. Just, like, power her way out of the out of a ground position. Um, yeah. But who knows? that If Carla can get her there and can just hold her down, I, it's very possible. It could be a boring fight, but sometimes it's you got to do to win. Yeah. So a win's a win's a win. Um Okay, yeah, uh, Boog, you suck for picking Carla there. Um, <laughs> hey, man. But that'll keep the well, podcast it's, going. It's, it's a new strategy for Boog Meat, man. I got to change it up. Well, <laughs> we can just fade each other, and then every fight will end in a draw. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so we had that one, five-round fight. Uh, like I said, Zhang's minus 400. Aspars is plus 280. Uh, and that brings us to... 
the main event. Now, are you guys considering this a trilogy fight or not? I am, yes. Yeah, Kev? I mean, yeah, I think, I mean, technically you have to, especially when the fighters are talking about it, too. Okay, you know? that's fair. Um, the only reason I bring that up is just because I feel like the rule sets are so different. If it was any other, you know what I mean? If it was anywhere close to an MMA rule set with those gloves, Israel Adesanya would have beat them both fights. Uh, the first fight was a lot closer between the two. Um, well, I guess first, let's... I fucked this up. It's Israel Adesanya versus Alex Bejeda. They fought twice before in kickboxing, um, and now they are fighting in MMA, obviously in the main event, at uh, 185 pounds. Um, and there are two kickboxing fights. Adesanya is 0-2 to Pajeda, and uh, one fight was won by decision, and Pajeda knocked him out in the second fight. Um, but I thought Izzy... Won the first fight. I just watched him back. You can watch him on YouTube now. Um, it's super close. Obviously, I don't watch kickboxing as much as I watch MMA, but uh, I thought Adesanya, just from a striking standpoint, won the first fight, and then uh, obviously Pajeda knocked him out the second fight, but that was after a standing eight count in Brazil. Um, whole bunch of factors going into it. But uh, what do you think ends up happening here? I do you think it's something similar to those fights? Do you think we see something completely different? Do you think Izzy takes it to the ground? Pajeda takes it to the ground? What are you thinking, Kev? I don't know if we see ground, but kind of like how you were mentioning a little bit with the, as this is, I mean, MMA, and there's much more experience on Izzy's side with the MMA side of things. But, yeah, man, I mean, it's definitely a fact, like you're saying, with the gloves. Like, if pay, I mean, if Pereira can get the ten ounce gloves of kickboxing to finish Izzy, then you know with the power, at least he's going to be able to finish him with the four ounces. Right. So, I mean, they're both really long, so it's not like Izzy is who's used to probably a four inch plus reach advantage and really can keep guys outside. Like Pajeda can charge in and like not still have a good amount of defense with him. And like strike on Asanya and really, you know, put some serious, like significant strikes on Izzy, where it's just really not that often. Maybe a little bit of Whitaker, like part two. But I mean, Cannonier didn't really blast him with too, too much. Um, but I think Pair has got that juice and that ability. But if I'm picking, I'm going Izzy. I want Panheta because I mean, I think this guy is sick. But uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, I think Izzy's just smart enough, knows how to play the game. And it's just going to be able to just keep that belt and just get this win. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, he uh, he said he found a like another gear in this camp, uh, similar to what I was saying before about how their coach got in their ass. But he was saying even before that happened, he was he knew this was a fight that he he needed to win. He said it himself. It's personal. I don't know if that's good or bad for fighting. Um, I think I've seen it go both ways, uh, for some guys. Uh, but yeah, I, I think Adesanya makes it a, a, a more technical fight than Pajeda is going to want it to be. Um, he's got good coaching. He's been in MMA way longer. I think he at least faints a couple takedowns to get Pajeda's mind thinking about it. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting. Boog, what, what do you think happens? Um, you know, I was uh saw this uh, thing online today, and it was saying, like this is such like a kind of like a, a legacy, but like a so important for Adesanya because of what happened in kickboxing, and this is like with the exception of Jan, the only like blemish on his record, and if like he were to lose and even like get finished again, I mean, like that would affect. Like I said, his legacy, so much so. I see him like trying his absolute best to not put himself in danger, point fight his way to a decision. Um, that's kind of what I think. That's how he gets it done. If it if he gets it done, is is his decision. But um, I mean, with, we saw with 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 Strickland, all it takes is is one little little touch. I mean. That left knee, hook. elbow, fist, especially the fist. I mean, it's just 
it's crazy the power that this guy possesses. We're talking about Pereira. It's uh yeah, it's unreal. I think uh I think he can do it. I'm hoping he can do it. I'm not a fan of Adesanya. But um you know, it we it I think it we must mention the fact that uh there was a picture that surfaced on the internet that um clearly showed that Adesanya was supporting a um bit of gyno in his right i believe uh, yeah <laughs> nipple area peck <laughs> and uh that was only there for one other fight which was against another big powerful brazilian knockout artist paulo costa and uh you know if you don't think that's not a coincidence you're just not paying attention so i think he's on the juice i think he's scared <laughs> and i think he's got a lot of line a lot on the line here so i think he's gonna be ready adesanya but you know when someone takes your lights out you remember it so yeah we'll and, see when, we'll see when they say go yeah and that's uh Pajeda said that too i forget what he sees like we have that saying in brazil when someone knocks you out you remember it or something like that um mm -hmm. which is sketchy coming from that guy that guy seems like he should have been born in like the 1800s on the fucking plains of america he's kicking up soccer balls and shooting them with the bow and arrow he's yeah he's just a, a different breed um but I like what you guys said. I think uh, Izzy ends up getting it done. I think we see some vintage striking from him. I think he wants to show people that, you know, like that was some some bullshit what happened. Like, I'm the better striker. I think he does play with fire a little bit. Um, but I think he ends up winning by uh, TKO in the fourth. I don't know why, but uh, I see him putting him down and then just fucking letting him have it on the mic afterwards. Uh which is the only reason I want to see Adesanya win is see what he has to say because it seems like he's coming into this camp with a lot of gusto. That's a word he kept using, gusto, gusto. So, <laughs> I I mean, I hope he can do it. Um, like I said, I was always never been an Adesanya guy, but after those Helwani interviews, it made, it, made me like him a little more. Um, and shout out Sam Reno, big Adesanya guy, the biggest... I know he'll be watching freaking this weekend. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's the card. I think we kind of went through, picked them. Um, but I was wondering if you guys wanted to throw some picks together. I, I already threw a couple parlays together if you wanted to look and see if there's there's anything you like. Um, Fuck yeah. The first one I'm thinking <laughs> is a little city kickboxing parlay. I'm just going to take all four right off the bat. Damn. Uh, and... That'll get you up to like plus 730. But I feel like, like I said, they're one of the teams. One guy, if uh, Olberg can can set it off on the right direction, they're all going to be uh, escalating and hype through the night. So I like that one. And then uh, I just took, there's a, a couple dogs that I like that I thought might have a chance. And that's uh, McCann, Frankie Edgar, and then Span. And obviously I picked against all three of them, but... I think they, out of the dogs, they have the best chance to win. So I was like, fuck it, we'll throw some money on them. And that gets you up to plus, the, plus 2,900 on McCann, Edgar, Span. Uh, threw 10 bucks on that just for shits and gigs. Um, but is there any fights that you guys were liking? Yeah, go ahead. Man, I'm giving it a look right now. I mean, just off a betting perspective, um, I like Chandler at plus 150 against Poirier. Um, if you were going to swing, I mean, if you're looking at two dogs that could really do something, I mean, you got plus 150 Chandler and plus 185 Ryan Spam. That would be a pretty nice little payout. Um, but if I'm going to put something together, let's take a look. Because I'm, def I'm definitely rolling with Chandler. And I'm going to roll with my boy Claudio. Let's go. Claudio I'm going getting with some Claudio. love. Plus 135 and Michael Chandler. We're just parlaying victories. I like that, Kev. So Chandler was doo -doo -doo, plus 170. Oh, oh, that's what he was earlier. I'm not sure what he is now. Um, and then who was the other one you said? Oh, plus one. Claudio P. Yeah, Cla Claudio P. <laughs> Um, okay. 
So plus 170, plus 135. You throw 10 on that, Kev, you're getting 2350 back. I mean, that's... There we go. Got 27 soft. in the bank from last win. Oh, no, wait, hold so on. I didn't, I didn't add your bet. My bad. You throw 10 on that, you're getting 53 back. Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. Kev, just, just taking the easy, not easy money, but the, the bets where you know you can uh, actually make something. Like exactly. That. I'm just a man living a dream, wondering why <laughs> I'm not making money. Boog, what are your thoughts here? You know, I was gonna go with uh, Hooker, but I don't want to. I don't want to go against Kev, so uh, I'm gonna go Reyes. I'm gonna go Ozitar. and um, Chandler and Pereira. How do you do? Wow. And you know what? Broncos, Tennessee. Sprinkle. Oh, that's where it ends. <laughs> uh, You're going to Nashville, baby. It's going to be a tough Sunday. <laughs> hey, Derek Henry under 100 yards. And Pajeda. Uh, In the first quarter. <laughs> I got to look at what the Broncos are at. You're going to make me look at this Bronco line right now. Plus 280. They're in the deep shit. Uh, hey, man. You're kidding. Don't count us out, baby. 12 and 5. We come. Do you think they actually have a, a chance at making playoffs this year? 100%, man. 100%. No, but All you gotta... we're on the podcast. I'm asking you seriously. Do you think no, they're Yeah. <laughs> I'll always believe. I mean,. They're in a tough I, spot if they lose this one. That's three and six. If you're four and five, hell yeah. I think you got a chance, though. All, all I'm going to say is I've, I've talked to someone who was close to the Packers offense for the last few years where Coach Hackett was, and he said took a couple, it took a little bit of time to get it down. But once they got it down, it was full steam ahead, and he said the offense looks a lot a lot the uh, a lot a lot of the same so uh shout out TJ we're uh we're looking good so uh defense is going to be holding people down and although Chubb's gone it's all good offense is coming around baby feed Latavius <laughs> <laughs> feed Latavius <laughs> oh man that's okay. a rough game plan if that's our a option <laughs> <laughs> You're not kidding. Even though I'm a Latavius fan. <laughs> that is oh, rough. That so um, Boog, so I calculated this bet. And let's just say you're going to be a happy man if it hits. Uh, it's plus 3,995. And that's Wait. for the Reyes, Azitar, Chandler, Pajeda, and the Broncos. A nice five-legger. I think I'm going to go to Willie Hill. <laughs> hey, you do you. Throw a little, throw a little uh, Andrew Jack. <laughs> throw an <laughs> Andrew Jack. You do that. Um, hey, there it is. Those are our bets. Bug got a five legger. Kev, keeping it simple, doing his thing, making money. <laughs> we love that. Units. Uh, you stacking units. Yeah, it's, Jim taking city kickboxing. Probably going to fuck him in the first fight. Thanks, Olberg. I'll thank you now, you fucking piece of shit. I appreciate that, Jim. Appreciate um, that. Right. Uh, but, yeah, thanks for doing this. This uh, episode was a little bit longer. Um, but uh, thanks for doing it, guys. We'll see you oh, next time. Yeah, no problem. Peace. Sure. Shout out Shroff Talk, baby. Yeah, let's go, boys. <laughs>